Hi, NSA. Hi, Winter. Play copyright music. question um yeah something like that <laughs> it's something it wanted me to play it's from one of the vtubers all right anyway hello Yeah, so, all right. Hello everybody, welcome to Ring Zero. My name is the Darkfire, and today we're gonna be dealing with um, Modern Apic. We're gonna be trying to up our Apic version by merging in some more code. Um, yeah, something like that. And yeah, thank you, I appreciate that. Yep, all right, so, um, yeah, as... Yeah. Yeah. So, we're gonna be fucking with APIC today again, trying to fix a VMware bug, merging code, and hopefully we should have um, better stuff. I'm gonna try to, like, fuck around with the mat tables for a minute. And ideally, by the end of this, I want something that works. So this should be interesting. Um, there's a lot of pieces to this puzzle. Uh, why am I doing this? Well, so, I mean, or just merging more parts of the SMP kernel. This is the code base you saw yesterday with the, yeah. <laughs> Maybe. Um, so, yeah. A lot of the stuff we're doing today is going to be pretty interesting, I guess. I don't really have a specific outcome I'm looking for, but I will give us the Trello. Um, this is our Trello. 
Read Apic IDs, read version number properly, create a universal Apic struct, which is actually already done. I did that off camera. Pull out the MPS stuff, put it into a better spot, which we did. I did off camera. Attempt to commit X Apic, replace some code in Apic.c with Matt aware versions, and check VMware issues. Um, that's, you know, the gist of it. All right, anyway, I am uh, going to focus on this. Why Vista? Hello, 44 Oops. Welcome to the stream. Did you join just to say why Vista? In which case, I will say, because it's not Vista. But I can, if I wanted. Um, Check bottom right. Yeah, it's not Vista. So these are the uh, remaining things we're doing today. I got 25% done, I guess, which is fine. It's just a skin. Hello, NSG650. Welcome to the stream. How you doing? Yeah. Also APIC. Well, yeah, I want to pr improve the S&P HAL some more, and so we're going to be adjusting the APIC some more. We'll see how this goes, though. I'm not sure. Um, good, good, wonderful. Maybe we'll try to uh, push ourselves to X APIC today. It's kind of up in the air. I'm not really sure. Um... I would like to go to XAPIC, and then I might do X2APIC stuff and merge that so we can have that pushed. We'll see. I don't know how I'm going to do that yet. I'm going to go the other route because the one that I'm... Uh, yeah, it's, it's a thing. Yeah, so we're going to just kind of go in here and slam this out for a while. We got our APIC mode table, which we are manually overriding to be 10, which I might change. I don't really know. I mean, again, if I do result in X APIC, then I, I, I don't know. Uh, let me grab some Ninja Live CD. As you remember from the last stream, I did clean shit up. So, let's see. All right. So, we're also going to go to the CMake file and disable the thing. Like so. I don't want to deal with this right now. Okay, and now we can swap this out for a better version down the line, but I just want to use what works for now. I did try to clean this up a while back, but it never worked right when I cleaned it up, and so I just kind of said, fuck it. Um, it's very hard to... Yeah. Oh, or Vedic, I don't know if I trust your music choices. <laughs> I feel like that's gonna end. I, are you gonna just give me a song that's gonna like get me banned? I know it. So, wow. So we're going to create the 
basic thing. Oh, this is actually building somewhat. That's be did better than I thought it would. <laughs> um, all right, so we have a manual override for the APIC info table to use one zero. I am not going to implement bug checks for the APIC because they're really stupid to use. Um, we have the header file. I, I'm using like this. I probably should fix that. Uh, and then the table end should equal to the mat table plus the mat table. Right? Yeah, the mat table plus the mat table header length, which is correct here. So that should be okay. Undeclared identifier for max. Um, I forgot to grab some shit. Um. What are we missing? It's inside mat.h, so. Um. Oh, the reason we're also doing it like this is so I can selectively enable MPS as I want, because uh, MPS is important to me, so. Hi, Damon Zolt. Welcome to the stream. How you doing? Um, I feel like we're missing something. Is it max IO apex? I don't. Isn't it two? I feel like it's two. Maybe not. It might not be two. You know what? I think max IOA pick is 64, actually. I'll have to check that later. Here, we'll keep the scheme here. Let's see. I could hear the police sirens outside. That's wonderful. They must be doing something over there. Okay, so we have our max IOA pick. I think that was the main thing we needed. Max IOA pick is redefined inside seven. Okay. Nope. So it doesn't like it. Max. What the fuck? Police chase, yes. I'm just gonna not, uh, cause fuck you. Yeah, that's right. 
And you're just going to be 64 because I don't really care that much. Local way pick unreferenced. And that works. I like that. Okay. So that fixes that. Okay. Um. So, from there, I want to let's see. This needs to equal that. So, we're going to create a pointer, which I already did. So it's how processor identity is equal to the help static processor identity, which is just, you know, meant to be like that. Mm -hmm. Let's see. <laughs> okay, and then for, oh, actually, I think I can do this in a switch state. Hang on. I want to go through each of the things. Yeah, this can be a switch statement. OK, so we're going to say for. The processor count, I guess. While processor count or while header. While header is less than table end. Um, So while let's say for for you long pointer of uh, a CPI header while a CPI header is less than the table end isn't it the header is plus plus no it's header plus length right so it's acpi header plus acpi header length then that should be it <laughs> uh, 
Um, then I guess I just want to deprint meow as a test. This should run multiple times. Differs in direction of u long pointer. Um, so this is u long pointer, and then this is PACPI header two, right? Oh, goodness. Unreferenced local variable. And then at 47, ACPI it differs from direction U long pointer. Table is U long pointer, and so we would say probably this. And so local APIC becomes unreferenced, which I can just eat that away. And that should build. And that's our introductory function. Yeah, that's our introductory function. All right, so now we can go ahead and try to read it. And it should read more than once if everything was done correctly. Which, I don't know if it will be for the first time, but we'll see. Uh, we'll power up the SMP variant. Now, this is where things get weird because we're going to pack on six cores. CPI, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, <laughs> sir, please. Okay, wonderful. Uh, not sure why that's not working. Did I do something wrong? Or no, that's React OS. Maybe I just need to do a different wind debug. That happens sometimes. It doesn't like the new one or old one, depending on the situation. Is it doing? 
It is not booting that very well. Yeah, there it goes. It's just it's not liking the pipe. I have never seen that happen before. But it wouldn't surprise me. VirtualBox is kind of kind of shitty. Um Okay. Maybe it doesn't like calling the function, which I guess is possible. I guess. Not very likely, but it's possible. This is open shell. I have gotten the native start menu working, don't get me wrong, it's just eh. Open shell is better for this. Hmm. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it's working fine now. Is it really just the calling of this that it struggles with? That's impressive. How it looks good? I don't know. Yeah, I guess it just doesn't like the function, which is something. So my assumption would be if I if zero this. Oh, right. We can't deprint. That's a thing. I remember that now. You can't deprint this scissor this early. It just won't. Um, that's a thing that it does sometimes. What we'll have to do is we'll have to act, okay, virtual box, come on, bro. Holy shit. My memory is at 12 gigabytes, and I don't really know why. Oh, it's the anti-malware service executable. It's taking four gigs of RAM. Woo! Anti-malware. <laughs> Needs three gigs. <laughs> okay. You do your thing, I guess. That's fine. Which school am I studying? I am no longer in school as I took it off to focus on React OS. I forgot to disable Defender. Yes, I did. And oh my god, my Windows installed like just dying because of all the crap. Holy shit. Whoa. Yeah. Um. What are you doing? <laughs> that makes sense. Where is it? Virtual box. It's eating my system resources. Om nom nom. Uh, yeah, I guess. I don't think I can actually change settings from here, though. Oh, I can. Oh my god, there's something very wrong. Is this a laptop or desktop? Does it matter? It doesn't really. Desktop. It's not what I wanted to do. Oh, fuck it. Come here. Come here. 
Turn off real-time protection. Save changes. Thank you. You fucking bit. Couple things about Windows 8 still really just irks me. I'll be honest. It's pretty good compared to every other Windows OS that's around right now, but yeah. For sure. Um, I probably should turn off these visual styles if this is going to keep doing this. I'm thinking about it. I also need to stop uh, the VirtualBox VM. There we go. Okay, anyway, now that we're a little less occupied, You are so beautiful, angry. What? <laughs> what? What does that mean? <laughs> Should I be concerned? <laughs> oh my god. It's still just not sure what it wants to do with its life. What are you doing? I can see it being odd. Uh, yeah, Google Translate does that. I put him on the watch list for a reason. Understandable, have a nice day. <laughs> um, okay. I don't... Are you, what do you want from me? Are, is today, okay. It is windy bug. You are angry, so good. What? You are anging, angering so good, right? I don't know what you're trying to say, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, uh, I've, Wow. Okay, so anyway, um, are you going to keep? Yeah, you're going to keep doing this. Sure, I, I'm gonna take that as a compliment, but I have no idea what you're saying. <laughs> I, th I think that, yeah, whatever. Anyway. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, thank you, I think. <laughs> Great. <laughs> So, man, I'm so tired, bro. Yeah, yeah, okay. I don't know what this is doing now. All right, come on. So I assume this is my problematic friendo. <laughs> uh, that's funny. Okay. Okay. Did I even build it? I don't think I did. Oh, whatever. I did now. Hmm. 
That's not correct either. Wonderful. Windy bug is just failing the pipe today. Okay, this should be okay now. We're no longer trying to calculate out the header, so it shouldn't be freezing. All we're doing now is actually getting the pointer to the ACPI table. Yeah, okay, there we go. Yeah, look at that, multiprocessor kernel. Jesus. <laughs> I don't know why that was so hard. Okay. Blur. It should boot. There we go. There we go. Okay, so now. Now we need to give some logic in here. I think, I mean, look what I did before. So I actually like using a while loop for that instead of a for loop, I think, because the for loops are kind of chaotic. So we're gonna say while the U long pointer of ACPI header is less than the table end, we're gonna go ahead and uh, check to see if the event we found, so the local APIC, which is equal to ACPI header, mat local APIC, local APIC is equal to PACPI mat uh, local APIC header and then if in the event that, yeah we'll need one and this is wrong I don't know what that means. <laughs> um, ah! Okay, so header type is equal to a CPI mat mat type local local apic and and the local apic header dot length is equal to the size of the cpi mat local a pick. And then we can increment the processor count here. But then if on top of that we're not found the ACPI header length, then we're gonna break. And if all goes well, we should have a processor incrementation. Which we can say that processor count is equal to zero and the physical processor count is going to increment based on this number meaning we have an identification of every physical processor in the system that should be spelled right we 
should reboot, and that should boot fine. Oh, I missed something. I need to update the header. So, ACPI header is equal to PACPI subtable header with a U long PTR to ACPI header plus ACPI header length and then save and now build and that should be okay. Okay, now we can reboot. <clears throat> and we shouldn't get lost anymore. And we don't. So now we can do something with this information, like externing the local processor count by shoving it into apic.smp or maybe just say extern that should be able to find that it finds it fine and now the physical processor count should be deprinted along with this so what we actually do here now is if we're defined as config smp then we do an end if and i think i'm just going to back these up for formatting purposes we then deprint how apps detected this many that we say percent x. Is it then processors so we can now take a look and that should be okay I really didn't see if it printed because it boots too fast now. <laughs> All right, hell is detected. That's not correct. Um, because I did a U long and I shouldn't have, and it should actually be a u int. I guess u long's fine. No, it should be u int. It should be an integer. u int 163264. For a maximum of 32. And then inside a uh, hal init, it's extern u int 32. And then that should be okay. Not reboot. Um, okay. So first, I, apparently I don't know how the D prints work as well as I thought I did. So we can just say that then, that'll fix that. Oh, percent %x, there is a way to percent integer. If 
it's what is the thing is it i or d it's percent d All right, so how is detected negative? <sighs> the fuck? <laughs> um, so it's a little off. So it's a little off. Wait. What the fuck? Wait, I'm missing something. D prints don't work like that. <laughs> I've totally forgot to actually print the thing. Hang on a minute. <laughs> Hang on a minute. Wait a minute. Oh, Rigo, Rigo said something in the thing too. Um, That's funny. I didn't know it could do that. I didn't know it would print anything if you don't have it. So, physical processor count is unresolved. So, that's fucking annoying. Based stack printing. Yeah, apparently. That's funny. Oh. I, I remember basic shit. Um, okay, so... I don't know if I can actually get that over there, thinking about it. Pretty sure it's not gonna be that easy. So I might just not do that. And I might create a debug function for this. Okay, so actually that probably is the best idea. So we're uh, gonna create a debug function for this. I don't really care about the loader block much. Let's say help print. Because there's other reasons you're gonna want this anyway, so we'll do it like that. And then we'll deprint those there instead. And instead of just having it like, you know, halfway through, we can print the entire map table there. And we just don't need to call it for some things. Um, yeah, that's fine. That'll work. That'll do what I want it to, I think. For now, until I feel like fixing the primary issue there, which is the fact that it doesn't always work like that. Um, so now I can just call it. Yeah, for the sake of sanity, I'm going to put a debug break here too. Debug break. While we're debugging this thing. Because all we're doing today is grabbing values and dealing with that shit. Uh, did it not? I did put it in the right spot, right? Right? Oh, yeah. Duh. Um, so we also need to create and throw that inside MPS, which as you noticed is actually over here now, which is pretty cool. Um... Which I think that's nice. Yes, the MPS HAL is going to be a thing soon. As you can see, I have all the MPS stuff right here. So that's going to be nice. This entire folder is going to be getting rid of, but the MPS HAL is now a thing. So that's cool. But we're doing MP or MAT today. Otherwise, if I... Yeah, you know, normal stuff. Uh, that's fine. So I got... Uh, Hal has detected six processors in the system, which is correct. So, um, I don't like that, so I'm going to, 
I don't think, how do you keep it in one thing? There's a way to do that. You know what? I'm just going to change my wording because I don't feel like dealing with it. Now, assuming Timo did his magicness, this should work like I think it will in a second. All right, so here, let's, now let's go in here and then we're gonna change the settings of the VM. It's gonna go in here and we're going to of a few more CPUs. Go ahead and start. Now, depending on how he did it, this will either work or not. Or Windy Bug's gonna fuck up. That that will happen too. Oh god. Oh god. Oh god. <laughs> Hal has detected a physical processor count of 22. There we go. That is correct. Now, let's not have 22 cores on our poor virtual box VM because that's kind of unfortunate. I'm going to put it down to an odd number of three and that will be the last one I test with. And that's our mat tables entry point. I'll get more detailed information over the next few tests, but the next couple things I add should have it do that. I'm just gonna take this out. Um, just make it super, super small. Yep, physical count of three. So we can boot that up now and it'll just, as you see, it's the multiprocessor kernel and we can go all the way to the desktop, um, but yeah. So, now the question remains of, oh. will this work like I think it will? So, that's the first thing we wanna print. Um, this is gonna change now, which is kind of funny. Let's see, how do I want to do this? Hmm. So now we can get a physical processor count of the system. This probably should change. And if my understanding of arrays is correct, if I set that to a variable, that actually, that should be set up to CPU max, I think. That should be the maximum CPU count which we can also obtain from mat tables technically, but uh, I kinda, well, actually, yeah, we'll keep it like that. I don't think you can append to a, an array, can you? And see, I think it's an object oriented thing. Okay, no, it is possible. What the fuck? 
Oh, that's weird. I didn't know C does that. All right, well, we'll do it like that for now then. The temporary CPU max will be 32, which is pretty poggers. Okay, so now we can go ahead and um, for let's go through and print this. So the way we're gonna do this, we're gonna implement this debugging thing. Um, mm, I don't think it matters if okay four the pro uh, physical processor count physical processor count wait no well, i is less than physical processor count then we say I plus plus. Um, all right, and then we deprint or we deprint the values from blah blah info, but it's actually or x n, and we actually use. Um, Oh yeah, we use the palette processor identity i. So i, and then do that. So i dot bsp check. So if we were doing this correctly, it would be process Processor count. Oh, it's I. Right, just I. Following information about the following processor. We check the BSP. just copy this a couple times or not okay all right so bsp check lapic id check processor id processor started and Ross processor number. Hey, where do? And then
which is going to vary. That's a fun processor, but is it better than the 86? Maybe. Maybe not. Variable I used. Oh. Like, why do you need two floating point units? What are you talking about? Which floating point units? Which floating point units? Because there's... Um, hey, Lee McCarthy, welcome to the stream. Um, yeah, there's... I don't, I don't know what you're talking about, but if you're talking about the processor numbers, there's differences there. There are different types of processor numbers. It's kind of obnoxious. Oh! Sorry, my brain is like completely in a different spot. <laughs> um. Yeah. All right, let's go see if this prints like I want to. It should, it should be a problem. Although it would be kind of cool if it looked nice. So it would be like, yeah, that's, that's cooler. I like that better. Um, yeah, nice. <laughs> All right, cool. That worked like I wanted it to actually. All right, um, so the way this works is that for each and every one of these, <laughs> so this is gonna be super obnoxious because of the way this works. So we start at zero, increment it. So, here we go, ready? The static processor identity table. So this is a pointer to this, sorry. So I can assign it from here. Dot BSP check is equal to one. How glorious is that? Um, or, no, I'm not gonna assume, but the I am going to say that the Ross processor number is equal to one, right? Yeah, and then the Ross processor number from there is equal to processor number, which is disgusting, but it's just how this works. All right, but the identity here is zero and then the identity here it oh wait actually i could use a static one for this i need to use a static one i think no no that's fine i know why i can do that yeah duh i want to do that and then the physical processor count which has been incremented by that so we can assume that wherever this goes, we're printing via the ROS processor number, which is totally not a ripoff of the NT processor number, but hey, here we are. And look at that. That did not do at all what I wanted it to do. Oh. Yeah, okay. I see how that happened now. It's this plus one. So, we start at one. So it would be one, two, okay. Is 
uh, dot physical core count. Ross processor number is actually that equal to that plus one. I don't need to ever comment that. That's a really stupid comment. I really feel like that's self-explanatory. Um, and then we can go in here. Yep, that does. Okay, there we go. All right, we now have our uh, our Ross processor number. Uh huh. So now we can print the proper information we need to. Mm. Eh, let's clean it up a little bit. I like that better. And yeah, there we go. For one, you can see how fucking confusing that is. <laughs> um, okay, has to check the physical watch count of three. Information about the following processor. Yep, that works. I like that. Or I'm gonna have to activate Windows apparently. Thanks, Windows. I won't do that right now though. I'm too lazy. I keep forgetting. All right. Now we can print the APIC tables. Fuck yeah. And we can basically just eat this. This one. And the physical processor count will be created here. Um, which is just going to be zero. And we can copy over the thing from that real quick because I'm too lazy to figure out what it looks like. Uh -huh. Okay, thanks. Um, yep. All right, there we go. that does what I want it to now, so now that we can keep track of this shit, we can use it to our advantage. So that from there, we want to check and watch um, the things. So we're going to restructure and reset the ACPI header that it's basically rewriting it over and over again which is debatable if that's a good idea but we'll do it like that for now before I switch to the other version so now what we want to do is that we want to create a switch statement and the way we do that is so we create a for loop I think um, and then we create a for loop for the table end but if it's, yeah, okay. Yeah, all right, that makes sense. So here, parse. Parse the major map tables now. Okay, uh, four. 
and that needs to be like that for all of these. I think. Uh, we'll do a U long. U long. I already had I. No, that's fine. Equals zero. Then the U long pointer of the APIC table? No, the ACPI header, I think. And then table end. And that should be okay. Now we say switch based on cases, right? If that's the C syntax. Double check to see if I'm understanding the syntax, right? Because I remember it, but I don't remember it. Yeah, it's just the switch expressional and then yeah. So we're gonna do it like that. And cases go here, cases, uh, and then we're using constant expressions. Is that Windows 10 with the Windows 7 theme? It's Windows 10 or Windows 8.1 with the Windows Vista theme. So yeah, there you go. Um, okay, so now we base it on the header type and header length. But the thing is, is that we don't actually need to calculate the header length because of the way mat tables work. So we actually say ACPI header or API header type, right? Now, that's our check, and then our cases are themselves the fucking, um, right? The cases themselves are the constant expressions. So, thank you. I appreciate that. The first one is going to be mat type local APIC. So case for the mat type local APIC. Now, instead of using an if statement to go through all the APIC possibilities, we just go through and loop through this switch statement and decide which is which. So for this case, we then um, I guess we'll need this to clear it out. We need to clear it out. Do we need? No, we're good. Uh, we need to clear it out. We need to. Um, we could do an if statement here to check, to check to make sure we are under the length, but I don't think it, again, I don't think it really matters for the way mat tables work. So we won't. So the what we need is the uh, APIC info table, I think. Yep, yeah, APIC info table is now we're actually going to do the processor count. Notice how I didn't say physical processor count. This is where shit gets weird because now we're going to split off and implement parts of what we're going to need for SMT. Though I'm not doing SMT today. That's. Yeah, that's a story for another day, but this is going to start the pieces of the puzzle. The processor count is going to plus plus. Oh boy, here we thread again. Yeah, yeah, it begins the great adventure. The processor count plus pluses. And then threads. Yeah, hyper threading. We're going to start the pieces of the puzzle of hyper threading today which I don't want to do, but I do at the same time. I know I have to. Um, do I want to keep track of the processor count that I get from this? Yeah, I do. So I'm going to say,
we're using a U-Long here because this one gets a kind of weird. All processor count. Or maybe we should say valid processor count, not physical processor count. Valid processor count probably refers to it a little better. So now we say, is this equal to the help apic info table dot processor count? And now using the information at hold, we can grab the non static identity and double it or not. What are you doing? Okay. And now we say for the valid processor count dot dot ID, Lapic ID, and processor ID, which is, I think, correct. Lapic ID, processor ID. And now, what we do here is even weirder because as you might have guessed, we need to assign the local APIC like this. Local APIC is equal to PACPI subtable mat mat local APIC ACPI header. So now what do we assign here, you might ask? Well, 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 my friends. Something quite significant. You see, this is assigned through the processor count itself. It's like that. Now this is actually equal to the local APIC ID and the local APIC processor ID, which should be fine. Expected where? Oh. And now we reassign the header and then we do another case statement, which the case is IOA pick, which we're not going to do right this second but it's there. You can see how it gets added to you and expanded on and it becomes better. So now, assuming this is working correctly, uh, is I but not used, 72, but not referenced. What do you mean? I. Oh, that's right. Um, after your switch, after all that, you just increment i. And then that should be good. i is the one that keeps track of that. Um, static processor identity. Is undeclared. What? Mm, okay. Um. That was weird. Oh. This is an error inside MPS. What the fuck? <laughs> I was like, what? Hmm, I thought I was good. It needs static processor identity, which is fine. You can just global it. Uh, temp CPU max is can just be defined up here. I'll define it here. It's 32. Because again, that handles a little differently for everything. 
Okay, so. Now. Let's see if it goes well. Should show some more information that I need. Here we go. really hard to tell if it's ever an actual problem with it or windy bug like that because it's oh wait maybe i did the wrong one yeah apic xcpi is the one i can't do there it goes okay so there's a problem with it so let's go back up here and let's take a look at it again see if we can't find out where the issue is all right, so we know that it's down here. So for the event that is all of this, We get the ACPI header type. So we know it's semi working. Mm. By the way, this was just a calculation of the entire segments while this is actually getting the data. So that, there's your differences. Um, the valid processor count is equal to processor count, which is defined. <sighs> ACPI header is less than table end. Do I ever... And then table end is header length. Hmm. If it's type for the type of mat type local APIC. Okay, so let's start debugging this. First, let's not use anything for the data and just get the thing. So if it's now, if we go, if the case is the local APIC, then we update the header by the header length. is unreferenced now, which is fine. I don't really care that much. And there it goes. OK. OK. So it's a little more core than that. equal to zero. We know that. You know what? That's what that does. That makes sense. All right, so now we need to figure out this. Let's see. 
Let's switch it over to another version and make sure that, okay, as long as the ACPI header table is headed to an end. Ah, wait, I see what happened now. So now we need the case default. Yeah. So if in the event that none of them are, sorry, default itself is duh. Okay. So basically the else, right? ACPI header is equal to the PACPI subtable header U long pointer of ACPI header plus one. So we go over the limit finally. Which means we can refresh that and reboot that. Go over the limit now. What are you doing? Please stop. Oh my god. Windy bug. What the fuck? And there it goes. It's dying. Bye. Thank you. You're not worthy. Okay, so now, if in the event that there is no like other thing to parse, then we continue on. So then we continue on. Ha <laughs> ha, yeah! There we go! <laughs> okay, now we can add this in and then uncomment that out. And now, if all goes well, this should build. This should reboot. And this should print. Like that. It worked. But it didn't work. At all. <laughs> All right, so the uh, processor ID is set to two. Hmm. Okay, so the valid processor count, which should be zero, yeah. But the processor count starts at zero. So then for the help processor identity, APIC info processor count, Plus, but I don't know if that's right. No, it's not. It should actually just be equal to I. Because it starts at zero. And then this should be like way up here. Yeah. Just I is zero. And then we increment it at the end after we run through the first time. It's like a do while loop, but cooler. We'll get there. We'll get there. Uh. 
the processor ID is set to two. Hmm. You know, we're using a pointer for this. I wonder if that's incorrect. So we're going to try not using a pointer for this. And then, so that's equal to 1 or 0. 0. Invalid processor count is 0. I'm going to go through this thing using the number zeros by resetting the local APIC each time. And that's going to be 1. So should. Should two. Okay. Um still doing it. Also the lapic IDs aren't right. Which is even worse. Hmm. Have fun debugging. Good night, Rico. Have a good day. stuff to do, do I? Okay, so let's see. Let's first, so we know that now that we're going through this thing correctly. Um, I 
You know what we might be doing wrong? Let's try setting something. I'm going to set it to I. I'm doing that so we can check to make sure that numbers are going through correctly. And maybe if that's working incorrectly, then we'll know. It totally isn't. So we know that this is working right. We know that this is working right. We can assume that this is working right. Let's check to make sure. I think it's just the mat tables themselves not being in the right spot. Yeah, it's okay. So this is working fine then. It's that the mat local APIC. So let's do a check. If in the event that I'll we'll put the code here, Now we'll check to make sure that <clears throat> header sky header length is equal to the size of CPI map table local APIC. Only then are we updating these. Processor ID is still incorrect, which is weird. Okay. Fine. Okay. Use that then. I'm so glad I have this like debugging function I wrote. Makes my life a lot easier. Hmm. Should also get food soon. Okay, so we know. Oh. Um, yeah, that's not correct, is it? Processor count.
I am going to go get food real quick. Because that is what I crave. I shall be back.
All right. It continues. So. There's something very wrong going on here. I had the best lunch ever. My favorite thing. Oh, it was so good. Why is it so bright outside, bro? All right. As a test, we're going to switch this code out with a new attempt. Hmm. They're not new, but we'll try Vadim's version. So All right, <clears throat> here we go. Obviously our code's a little different, that's okay. I was doing my own unique thing for a while and then, yeah. This should do something a little different. Well, interesting. Weird. <clears throat> uh. 
The S and P option will refer to the code I wrote. Basically, it'll be multi-core support, but I don't really recommend it. No, I debug it. I implement it, but it's gonna be a while until it's stable. <clears throat> so. It's not quite right. Okay. <clears throat> we'll do it like that. Well, that seemed to work.
Ah! <clears throat> Now watch this. This is gonna be cool. You know, <laughs> I just realized something. I think. Oh, Lord Almighty. Ugh, okay. That's fine. Okay, I'll take the win. So that's okay. All right, that's fine. Let's... Go ahead and out to the Trello. I forget that VirtualBox and VMs in general just have weird IDs that really don't make any sense to me. But that's not what we're here to test, but it will be. So, <clears throat> you might be asking yourself, Dark, why are you just, just compile it again? Well, <laughs> yeah, so fun fact, we're about to do something a little bit quirky. So, gonna go ahead Grab Rufus, and let's do a hardware test. <sighs> All right. one. We go. Make sure this works. So I'm gonna go over here and you're not gonna be able to see it right this second. Uh, I haven't set up the camera yet, but I'm going to be going ahead and attempting to boot this thing. <clears throat> but over here edition. This is a six core processor, and in theory, we should have this do the right thing. Yes! 
Oh, that's so good! Dude! Awesome! <laughs> Look at that! SMP on hardware, bro! <laughs> Alright, so that worked. Alright, let's go see how far we can boot just for fun. Well, it's booting. Multiprocessor kernel. Oh, it failed there. Uh, ACPI error, which doesn't really surprise me much. But based, yeah, based for sure. That's awesome. All right, six processors detected properly on my six processor system. I'm so glad I bought that thing like you suggested, BD. That thing's been a blast. All right. Um, cool. Okay, so we have our ID, processor ID, and started, and Ross processor number. As you probably could imagine and see, uh, I did something a little weird here. It looks like the IDs are being showing up as like incremental ver values. That's not always going to be the case. In fact, it's very rare that it's the case. But this isn't an Apex Apex. This isn't an X2 Apex system, so. That reading that we're doing, reading it like this, where we don't assume the processor ID, is X2 APIC ideas, which is fine. Because uh, before, a long time ago, you'd use the processor ID, fun fact. But, uh, yeah. So, oh, that's not correct. I don't know why I did that. Oh, wait, yeah, it is. Who did that? Team of Bruiser eight years ago. Yeah. Um... Okay, <clears throat> so that works now. We now have universal data across the system. Now, the question that we have to ask ourselves, is this gonna work like I think it will? Um, so we can assume that the health processor identity is now the thing we want, as it's the pointer to the actual data. So we'll go here and deprint, or uh, we'll deprint something. Hello world from Matt Apic X Apic. And then we'll take this Extern that as a p void. I think. Um. No, it's a pointer void. To. No, it's it's a health processor identity. We'll say zero dot Ross processor number and that should work if all goes well Debug again. Make sure that does what I want it to do. <clears throat> yeah, I still have the computer on. Um, it just kind of sits there. It's a fast little thing, though. Nice to see that it does uh, try to boot. That's cool. Um. Uh, okay, this is in the wrong spot. It's right there. There we go. <clears throat> now,
how processor identity is unknown. <clears throat> It's either that one or that one. I don't remember which. I could have sworn we used the pointer and not the... Oh, remember how silly things work, Dark. Yeah, that's good. That's correct. Uh, let's try two. Which should be three. Yeah, three. Um, okay. Nice. We have got a lot, actually. We have a lot. Um, so where does this come in? You might be wondering. Well, a lot. don't really care about the uh, printing stuff here directly and I don't really care about the debug break anymore now <sighs> we want it in smp.c which doesn't exist yet All right not in this version <clears throat> bad. So not quite what I want yet. Okay. All right, with that out of the way, we should be able to print and then try out VMware, which is the one that really struggles. So here we go. VMware is the one that doesn't like our APIC. So we should be able to launch VMware. And we'll create a new one. Sure, that's fine. And this guy's entire thing is just to debug this. So we're gonna give it a ton of processors. Let's give it eight. I'll remove the hard drive, give it some more memory to boost those processors. Don't need a printer. Don't need sound, don't need USB, don't need network, just don't need 3D graphics. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, that's fine. Now we launch the CD from an ISO image. Oh 
which is going to work perfectly. Huh. Okay. Well. I wasn't expecting that. Okay, so we are using the MP how and SMP debug. It detected a physical 8 processor count, which is correct. It detects the processor IDs correctly. See you, Vedic. Um, it's got the ROS number, right? Let's take a second and actually analyze APIC APIC, which also keeps track of this data that doesn't use it the same way. It's not the multiprocessor code. It should be boot fine. Yeah, we're, we're fine. Okay, here we are in APIC VMware. Um, Looks to be okay. You can go to device manager and you can see the computer is in uniprocessor mode. I don't see anything out of the ordinary. Yeah, looks fine to me. Odd, okay. Um, Alright, well, let's see our chart. We have attempted to commit XAPIC. Um, okay. Now we need to. Oh, uh, we also merged in working mat tables, so there's only three things left for today. I want to read the APIC version number, which isn't. Wired, but I want to. And among other things. All right. Um, let's go ahead and make sure this builds on all platforms. Pretty easy. Looks like it's gonna build fine. Yeah. Okay. Coolio. That is another thing that's been thrown in here now that it works fine. Um. Let's take a look at it. Look at all those greens, bro. Look at all those greens. How fast building. I have a very fast computer and I build like three things at once, so it depends really. Okay, so we have APIC identification now. Um, which is pretty cool, I'll admit. And we can actually throw that inside the APIC now. And we know from the computer over there that it seems to be working okay. I can merge in the SMP kernel later. Or SMP HAL later. Um, I'm going to leave.
leave this like it is for now. I'll add more to this right here. You can add more a picture or map tables to parse, but uh, yeah, I'm okay with this for now. So Timo did a lot to change and clean things up, which was awesome. And this is now ready for what I need to do. So. A lot of this stuff that is the main issue doesn't need to be changed too much. But there's a couple things we need to look at. Um, so is equal to This recognizes pretty much every processor that's multi-core that supports HAL and MACPI. CPI. Um, so anything with ACPI and SMP at the same time, it'll work on. It's just, yeah, it's just how it is. Um, so, <laughs> the fun part. This now isn't actually the case anymore. So, hmm. It's going to be a big question mark. I think that, hmm, hmm. A couple of the things we need to deal with is that a this probably needs to be changed for, to logical, but I'm not sure if I'm ready for that. Let's go ahead and change it to cluster. And let's make sure it identifies the physical core still properly. And then we'll take a look at the fun things. So, Gloucester. And there goes the thing again. You can see why it's failing. Make sure my mat tables know what to do. And then we'll go ahead and try it on a logical system. Spelt it wrong. It's possible that VMware needs a logical system, but I, I doubt it. 
That's part maybe part of why it struggles so much. Hard to say. Okay, are you still gonna be doing this? There it goes. Okay, so now that's ready. There it goes. So now we just one by one make some changes. Okay, so we have the cluster mode, which is no longer flat, which is good. Um, we're going to set, that's fine. Bootstrap core is equal to CPU is zero, which is uh, save it globally. It reads the APIC version and print it as APIC version. I don't think it uses. Okay, so we want the trigger mode to be... No, I think that's fine, actually. Now, does it even do anything with this? Oops. It totally doesn't. Let's... Deprint the APIC version. Extern you long then. The X APIC. Or I'm just going to not print it, which is unfortunate. Okay, so it's reading something, which is fine. Um, okay. Logical APIC ID. Okay. So, <laughs> um, interesting. 
That's pretty cool. Well, I found problem one. I was making assumptions, but it doesn't need to do that anymore. Okay, logical, logical. Um. Okay. Well, that only leaves one last test to do, and that's. I'll have to, there's more, way more to do with these mat tables, but like, that's, I just wanted to go over it once and make sure everything was what it would need to be. But I believe we can read with, by changing that, we can, woo! Ah! We can read the threads. The only way to test that though is with that thing, and I don't know if it's worth grabbing out yet. You know, something with hyper threading. You know, I don't think I actually need to do that. I don't think that's the right register. Hmm. Okay, so then I think that okay. 
first off. What we need to mostly focus on is IOA pick that we need to like adjust for this. Uh, I'll show you. So we have our IOA pick, our IOA pick physical base divided by page size, which is the page frame number, which is, yeah, okay. Um, wait, hang on. Weird. Weird. Okay. Um. Anyway, with the management of IRQs, you need to set it up through this struct. Or not that one. That one. This one. That's fine. Uh, that's going to be simple. I don't really. I'm not in a rush. Um, uh, huh. okay. Well, truthfully, I don't really, I don't really know how to test the next thing without shutting off this computer that has a serial port. And serial debugging this one <laughs> to be honest so uh in honor of just uh yeah so we already checked this and check this i will okay we haven't done that one yet exactly but we have at the same time so these two i will do off camera and then these are already done um, yeah, I don't really know how to debug this without shutting this one off, so I guess I'm going to wrap it up here and continue working on this, so yeah, it'll be easier that way. Um, we're making good progress, I've got a lot of things fi figured out now and fixed up. The next time we will start merging the SMP HAL, that actually works so we'll see um thank you all for watching and i hope each and every one of you has an absolutely wonderful night goodbye